The first doses of COVID-19 vaccine are flowing out of factories and going into arms. Now, a scramble for things you may not think about, like glass and ice, key parts in a so-called cold chain, a kind of vaccine conveyor belt kept at precise temperatures, stretching from plants to planes to the place of injection, a chain that will eventually reach more than 300 million Americans and the world. And any kinks in this chain could slow everything down. There's always shortages. You always under forecast, over forecast, under procure, over procure. This is the nature of supply chain. Just look at this picture and all that glass. But it can't just be any glass. The vaccine made by Pfizer has to be kept super cold. Glassmaker Corning has been making vials that won't shatter, branding it Valor glass. It also doesn't flake or chip, which could contaminate the vaccine with tiny pieces. There's less friction. You can see how these vials move much more smoothly. We're able to improve manufacturing productivity, which in this you know, kind of environment where every vial and every dose counts, um, it really has a lot of benefits. Corning is getting some $200 million from the U.S. government, helping it expand manufacturing. It's making glass in upstate New York, New Jersey, and North Carolina. Right now, enough for more than 100 million doses. As 2020 ends, we will have increased our capacity about 4x. And uh, by the end of 2021, we expect a, a 10x increase in our capacity. Will it be enough? Um, boy, we sure hope so. And we're doing everything that we can uh, to make sure that we are not the constraint in getting this vaccine to the public. Once used, the glass vials are melted down, recycled. You may also be looking at the future. This type of glass will help preserve the quality of what's coming, a newer generation of vaccines that have to be kept stable. Keeping this vaccine super cold has also meant a scramble for special freezers, not normally found in hospitals. But the vaccine also has to travel, and keeping it cold along the way, dry ice. It also helps preserve the vaccine at hospitals and pharmacies that may not have those super cold freezers. Dry ice is carbon dioxide in solid form, it's widely made to preserve food, to keep things cold in shipping. With the vaccine now here, the industry says it needs to produce 5% more. We looked at our systems, uh, we're, and we are confident that there's capacity in the system today to meet that 5% increase in dry ice. Dry ice is made around the time it's needed. It's not something you make and store because it melts. We're not gonna run out of the CO2, which makes the dry ice. Uh, we will make sure there's enough of the vaccine. You know, we're, we're waiting to, to hear from those that need it. Getting vaccines to hospitals, to clinics, and into arms, all of it part of a well-established path. What's different this time is the volume and the urgency with cases on the rise. As for that last step, a needle and syringe, one estimate says the U.S. will need 850 million. Everybody's trying to ramp up, scale up, and pivot. And it's going to take time. And it's going to, and it's going to be very sloppy. And it's not going to be precise. There's also something else that worries this supply chain expert. I'm still not sure. I'm still not, in my gut, I'm not sure we have that uh, command and control, that, in, that intelligence in the network to be able to really effectively allocate and distribute to all the parts of the country that we really needed to go to right now.